Welcome back to another episode. Today I am going to start the fiberglass on the aero pieces for the doors so I can get on with this and I can also make a start on the top part of the rear wing. I am waiting for some more PVA release agent so I can't, there's no point in prepping this um, mould until I have the release agent. For these end plates, it's ideal for me to use the thickest fiberglass mat I have. I'll probably put two layers on each piece. Hopefully the wind won't take these out while they're drying. I think the next two I make will be a little bit thicker. I've just undecided on how many layers I am going to use for each side. But I think if I make the partner panels to these slightly thicker, the combination of both would be plenty. So I've just pulled both of these moulds and the finish is not great. So I can make a fresh mould off the piece I've pulled. So I will probably do that. So it's quicker for me to get this right than trying to, to repair the inside of the first mould. So I will do that alongside my other jobs and see if I can get these better. Ideally I want two of each panel. So I have a spare in case I need to make any more. I've just cleaned the pieces outside with warm water. I figured out that you can get the PVA off pretty easily with warm water. So I will wait for that lot to dry. I will keep these as a backup mould in case I need them further down the road. Clearly I need some more practice before I start on the car itself. So I will make a start on making the mould for the top part of the wing. I put an extra layer of gel coat on last night, so I will do the fiberglass thing now. Well, that took about an hour and a half to do a thin layer of fiberglass so I will check it tomorrow and do another layer. There are a few bits already I can see that aren't brilliant but um, we'll see how we get on. Welcome back. I'll just update to you on where I'm at with the fiberglass pieces. So later on today I should be able to pull 
the mould for the top part of the rear wing. I have started to do repairs to the aero for the doors and I have started to do repairs to the mould for the lower part of the wing. I won't proceed on the car until I've had the optimum amount of practice on the other pieces like I've said before. If you remember a couple of months ago I was stripping down the engine for the Subaru. The engine has been built now, it's ready for collection so I will pick that up today. I was hoping that I would be a lot further along with this part of the build, the body kit. So the plan was to when I picked the engine up it could bolt straight into the car. However being it so messy in here I think I will put it in storage until I have finished this part of the process and then once the car is clean and ready for assembly then I'll get the engine in. Just need to grab a couple of straps for the engine. Straps, check. So before I put this engine into storage, I'll just talk you through what's gone on. So this long block has been fully built by a Subaru engine builder, a specialist. The block has been converted to a closed deck block and it's been bored and skimmed. There have been Marl 6218 stroker pistons fitted with Williams H-beam rods. There's a EJ256 nitride crank with ACL race bearings. We have ARP 11mm head studs, Roger Clark Motorsport multi-layer steel head gaskets. The heads have been fully rebuilt, not modified. And there is a JDM sump and 11mm oil pump. There's new water pump and cam belt kit fitted with all the seals and gaskets as required. This engine with the stock heads is capable of 450 horsepower. I will most likely run around 400 horsepower when it first goes in the car and then progress from there.